Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at Zorin OS6 Core, that is the free version of the Zorin Linux distribution. Now, Zorin is based on Ubuntu 1204 binaries, which means it's compatible with most of the uh, huge range of Ubuntu applications out there, and it uses the GNOME 3 interface, but without the contentious Unity desktop. Um, its ethos is to ease the transition from Windows to Linux, and it does this using two main tools. The first is that it comes with a whole host of Windows emulators installed, such as Wine and the Wine Tricks library, and also the Play on Linux application manager. Secondly, it uses something called the Zorin Look Changer, which allows it to emulate the look of various versions of the Windows interface. In addition, Zorin comes with a large amount of software pre-installed, and you can see the major ones listed here. So it's a little like Linux Mint, in that Zorin is ready to use straight out of the box, and there's no additional downloading that you need to do unless you want a specific application there. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the Zorin home page. So first thing you might want to do if you're thinking about installing Zorin is to take the tour and that will tell you a little bit about the operating system. Once you're sure that Zorin is for you, what you can do is click on the link up at the top here, get it, and then the free option. Okay, and if you scroll down, you'll see that there are two options. There's a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. Okay, so depending what architecture your PC is running on, you can download the version for your hardware. Additionally, there's what's known as a light version, which is a version for low-spec computers, and it's based around LXDE rather than GNOME. So those are the versions available. So I think what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and take a look at the Zorin Look Changer. So that gives you the ability to emulate the desktops of various versions of Windows. This will bring up a dialog box, and the default desktop in Zorin is a Windows 7 lookalike. If you click on the Windows XP button, what you'll see is that the desktop changes, and it gives it a bit more of an XP flavor. When you look in the start menu, for instance, you can see that it's got the uh, run um, all applications, etc. down there. So it looks a bit more XP-like if you're coming from XP. helps you to find your way around the menus and the desktop a little bit easier. Okay, the other option we've got is GNOME 2. So if you come from older versions of Ubuntu or Fedora, you can get back that old GNOME 2 look. Okay, but um, let's just go with the Windows 7 default here. We just change it back. Let's go and take a look at the Software Center. Now, the Software Center is the standard Ubuntu offering. So, this is where you can download any applications. If you want anything additional in here, you can just come in and search for it. You can take a look at the different categories down the left-hand side. For instance, Internet. And then you can just click on whatever application you want and install it. So, for instance, here's the Internet chat software that's available. Now let's take a look at the facilities available for running Windows programs within Zorin. So if we go to the Wine option of the main menu and we start up the Play on Linux utility, you'll see I have a number of applications already loaded. Okay, And I just select the one I want to run and then click on the Run icon. It takes a little time to start up because it's got to run them in its own virtual machine. OK, so up comes the splash or loading page. I'll just wait for that to complete. And here we are in Adobe Photoshop Elements. So as you can see, it's fully functional. And uh, we're running in Windows emulation mode now. However, what I would say is don't be surprised if you need to do a fair amount of configuration and fiddling around to get your Windows program to work under Linux. And bear in mind that not all Windows applications will work well under Wine. So you need to do a little bit of research first. OK, so the best thing to do is if you go back into your browser and go to uh, Google. So let's just type in here. OK, and then you search for your application with Wine HQ preceding it. So Wine HQ, so let's look for Crisis. Crisis 2. If we click on it, we can see that Crisis 2 has been certified 
for use with Wine. So it's a great way of finding out whether a Windows application should or should not run under um, Wine emulation. Okay, so let's take a look at the file manager, which for Zorin is Nautilus. So pretty much the same as most other file managers. If you double click on a directory, you navigate down into it. And if you double click on a file, it will actually run that file. In this case, it's a video that we did earlier. And um, you can see the media player displays it. Okay, so we just stop that there. And so if we navigate back up to another directory, um, you can see we can move the window around here. And if we navigate back down into that directory, we can also drag any file across to the desktop and we can move it around on the desktop and place it where we'd like it and indeed if we right click the icon we can do things like rename it or indeed delete it okay so if we navigate back up here oh one other thing we can do if you right click a file you can access the properties rename it etc okay so what i'll do now is plug in a usb drive as you can see, it comes up on, as an icon on the desktop here. If we right-click the icon, you can open it, and up comes another Nautilus window showing you what's on the USB drive. So what we can do is obviously copy files between the USB drive and our hard drive. So I'll create a new tab here, navigate to where I want the files, and then I can just take the file icon and drag it between the two tabs and drop it. We can see here that the file has been copied. When we finish with the USB drive, we just click on the eject icon. As you can see, the icon disappears from the desktop. We can now take a look at the uh, default media player, which is Rhythmbox. One nice thing about Rhythmbox is it's an uh, interface with the Ubuntu store here. So you can uh, go down, find the music that you like, and purchase it. One thing to note is the Ubuntu store is very easy to use, but is often slightly more expensive than Amazon, so be sure to check out both sites first. Um, we've also got a terminal window running here, which is just running our um, FFmpeg, and we've got the usual suspects in the system tray here. Going left from right, we've got Bluetooth, uh, battery status, network status, the sound setup and volume, email and chat applications, your calendar, your user menu and your shutdown and general settings menu.